All right, day two. Who is ready? Who is ready for day two? Um, wow, I feel like a whole week has gone by since yesterday because you guys have been so active in the group. You guys have done your homework. You guys have shown up. You guys are amazing. And I, I just feel so honored that you are sharing your story with me and that you are allowing me to go on this journey with you because, because this is my life's work. This is my heart's desire for you to manifest your soulmate relationship because I know how hard it was for me. I know how hard it was for my mom. I know how hard it is out there. And you guys can have exactly what you want. And I wanna show you exactly how to do that. So I read over your stories, such amazing powerful stories of the things that you've gone through and now you're here right of course it was hard going through these things and a lot of them were very emotional for me but it's amazing that you have come all this way and that you are here and that you are showing up for yourself and that you are ready to call in your soulmate despite everything that's happened. That is so powerful. That is so good. Okay. Uh, my own friend, oh, let's see, awesome, okay. Ready. Bray, Crystal, Jess, hi. Okay, you're amazing, thank you. It's so hard to share, it is, it is. And that's why I have this group and that's why I have you guys sharing and that, cause I know that all your stories are a little bit similar, right? And that when one person's vulnerable, it creates trust within this group. One of the things that, hey Stella, hey Lindsay, my own friends and family don't know some. My own friends and family don't know a lot either. Cynthia, ready, awesome. Elizabeth, Stephanie, Rachel, Rachel, hi, how are you? Can't, can't. Karima, Michelle, okay, okay. Come on in, come on in, let's do this. Um, so, I know one of the big things for me was after I got my divorce, I did not trust anybody. I withdrew from my family. I withdrew from my friends. I cut everybody off because I didn't trust anybody. And that's really what we're trying to do in this group because it's so hard to trust a man or a woman if you're you know, if you're a guy on here, um, it's so hard to trust somebody in a relationship. But when you can't trust your most intimate partner, it means, I always do that since stay alone. It means you can't trust your friends. You can, it means you can't trust your family. Hi, Idea, 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 Idea. How do you say that? <laughs> I should know this. Um, you can't trust your friends and family. You can't trust other people. You can't trust um, money. You can't trust the, the universe. You can't trust yourself, right? So what we have to do is we have to start chipping away at this, right? We have to start chipping away at this. And that's part of why we have this group. That's part of why I have you sharing your stories because when you come out and you step forward and you say, I'm gonna trust a little bit, that means everything, right? When you trust a little bit, it leads to you trusting more, right? So the little things make up the big things. E Day, Ida, I can't do this. 
Idala. La. Idala. Idala. I think I got that. Idala. I know, like, and if I'm on a live, it's just like my pronunciation goes out the window, but I knew it yesterday. I knew it earlier. <laughs> Like, it's just on a live, I just get caught up in it, in things. Um, Idala. Yes. Got it. Okay. But who can relate? Hi, Margarita. Who can relate? Who has a hard time trusting all people? Put a one in the comments. If you have a hard time trusting everybody, if you have a hard time trusting yourself, your friends, your family, people to show up for you because it's hard, hard so it's been hard to trust your most intimate relationship put a one in the comments because i know i'm not the only one i cut off my entire family i didn't talk to anybody one one lindsay ann thank you yes crystal one yes so i know where you are it's not just isolation and loneliness from your soulmate. You're isolating from the entire world. It's so hard for you to show up in this group. And I know that. And I respect you so much for showing up how you have, right? And to, and to trust me with your secrets, with your stories, right? I trust too much and get hurt. Yes. We're gonna we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about that, right? I trust everyone except my partners. But when you have a hard time trusting other people, including your partners, right? When you have a hard time trusting other people, you have a hard time trusting yourself. Okay. So we're gonna talk about trusting yourself. I do both trust too much and don't trust at all. Yeah, I totally get that. It's like exact opposite of each other but it totally makes sense so if you can't trust yourself to pick the right partner right then you're not gonna want to get into a relationship you're not going to want to take that step forward so you have to learn to trust yourself and we're really working on that this week this is the self-love part and I don't really like talking about self-love because it doesn't actually make sense. Because we all love ourselves to some degree or another. And a lot of us have been working on personal development. And of course, we're great. We're awesome. Um, but we also don't trust ourselves. Hi, Iris. Glad you could join us. Right? So, and we don't trust ourselves to make that decision to jump into that next relationship. So we're going to talk about self-love and learning to trust ourselves and building that relationship with ourselves. Okay? But in a very different way than most uh, coaches teach it because I learned it in a very different way. Who here, who here has downloaded and watched any of the healing video put a two in the comments if you have put watch the healing video it is easier to stay alone but it's not it really is not in a way it feels safer it feels easier but it really hurts natalie we've been waiting for you rachel jess Lindsay, good, healing video, put a two in the comments. Not me, I will. Okay, Crystal, yeah, well, you just got in today. Michelle, got it, okay, yes. So we are really creating this relationship with ourselves because if you can't trust yourself, how can you pick the right person? I stay alone from friends and family. Yes, so I know exactly where you're at. I know because I did it. I did it. Right? I did the same thing. So, this is why you're having trust issues because you can't trust yourself and you can't trust yourself to choose a partner and then you can't trust your intimate, most intimate relationship. This also, by the way, is why you're having problems with money. <laughs> right? Because if you're having problems in trusting your most intimate relationship, you're going to have 
problems trusting yourself with money. That is a completely different topic, but just so you know, okay? Yes, very eye-opening, yes, okay. So, here's, here, I hate this example. I hate this example because I love animals. I love animals and it hurts when I say this example. But it's like, every time you allow yourself to stay in a relationship with somebody, thank you, that cheats on you, right? When you allow yourself to stay in a relationship with somebody that lies to you, calls you names, cheats on you, right? It's okay, Natalie, right? When you allow yourself to stay in this situation, it's like allowing yourself to be abused. And the, the example is, you know those um, like commercials with the dogs that are abused and like they're very hard to watch. So, and I don't know if you, any of you have rescue dogs or rescue pets, right? Um, but it hurts me when animals are abused, right? But when you're staying in an abusive relationship, even if it's not that bad, right? My ex only cheated on me once. It wasn't that bad, right? When you allow yourself to stay in a situation with a man or woman that you don't trust, you are allowing yourself to be in that abusive situation, right? You are, you are that, that dog that's been abused. You are putting yourself in that situation. Yes, yes, it's so hard. Um, it's hard for me to even describe this, right? So you're putting yourself in that situation to be abused. And you are letting yourself stay there. And this is why you don't trust yourself. Not because you pick bad people. Not because you pick bad men. Not because you pick bad relationships. Because you allow yourself to go back and be beaten again. And be abused again and be mistreated again, right? So, you can't trust yourself because you keep going back to that. So, this is why you're having trust issues with picking men because you don't trust yourself so then you don't pick good men and or women, right? You don't pick good relationships. So if you don't trust yourself, then you're automatically going to pick a bad relationship. So you have to trust yourself first. And that means making sure that you are in a good situation. You are in a good relationship, right? You say no to anything that is not exactly your soulmate and what you want. So, and, and would you, and I know that I, I, we have a lot of moms in here, um, but maybe, maybe you're not mom, um, but would you let your daughter stay in a relationship, in the kind of relationships, you, would you want your daughter to stay in the kind of relationships that you have allowed yourself to be in? Right? Yes or no? Like, would you want your, your little girl, you know, um, 18 years old to be in some of the relationships you've been in, right? So we have to think of it that way, right? Uh, um, the, the abused animal, our daughter, our best friend, right? Would we want somebody to treat our best friend that way? We would be irate, but it's not okay when it comes to you. Don't go backwards because there is a reason it didn't work out the first time. Didn't always listen, but I believe that. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. For sure. Okay. So, my screen keeps... Okay, hell no. Right. Right. Okay. So, I had this idea that life was hard. I don't believe that. Yeah. Um, what, they, not to go back? It's okay. It's okay if you don't believe that. 
Um, so I've always had this idea that life was hard, right? So I was, I don't know why, but it, like my, my dad was in, my dad was in the army, right? And he, he was a spy. He spied on the Russians when the wall was up. So we lived over in Germany and he would always go out to the field and he was like this big tough man, right? Yes, that is true. Yes, God can restore. Yes, um, but some people need to hear not to go back, right? So you have to believe whatever works for you. Like if you keep going back to bad relationships, you have to believe not to go back, right? Um, and yes, God can restore anything and anyone, but it's you have to be so, so committed to that. So um, my dad was, he spied on the Russians, so he was this like tough guy, always jumping out of um, airplanes and um, just this, this really tough guy. And because he was in the army, I thought life was hard because he always had to be like working out and really tough and like going out in the field and so I thought that I had to be prepared for anything and that I had to be really tough and I had to be really hard right and I saw my mom just be very um, strong because she was left alone a lot of time um, part of the time my dad was in the army part of the time my dad was cheating Right, um, but my my mom had to be very strong, right? And so we grow up with these ideas that we have to be strong and that we have to be solid, right? And that life is hard. And while life is hard and life can be hard, we don't have to be hard and we don't have, we can actually choose for life to be easy. But if you believe that life is hard, like I believed that life was hard, right? So I believe that life was hard, so then I cho made, I would made cho choices. I made choices, see, <laughs> I can't even talk. You, I made choices that made life hard for me, right? So if you believe that, yes, I think I make it harder too. If you believe that life is hard, hi Laura, Welcome, come on in. If you believe that life was hard, then you are gonna make choices that make life harder. But if you believe that life is easy and that you get to choose for life to be easy, then life actually becomes easy. And this is part of my manifesting, right? And I know that there are things that happen that are hard in life. Trust me, I know, but it's okay. It's okay but when you start to believe that life is easy then you start to make different choices and it takes some time for that to start to appear okay it does take time for that to start to appear but you get to choose that life can be easy so when you choose that life can be easy and that relationships can be easy because they don't have to be the kind of hard that we've been believing that they are, right? They don't have to be the kind of hard that they've been before. Right? Um, we can actually choose that life gets to be easy. And I, I used to, I, who's an Eminem fan? Who's an Eminem fan? Put a yes in the comments if you like Eminem. Okay, I choose that my life and relationships can get to be easy. So I used to listen to Eminem and I was like so hard and like listening to Eminem, working out, lifting weights, right? Yes, okay. And he came from like a mobile home, <laughs> yes, <laughs> right? And he's, he's tough and he came from this bad like, um, bad past, right? <laughs> well, yeah, like Eminem's. <laughs> Yeah, that works. So he had this hard upbringing. So when I was listening to him and I was like, life is hard, you have to be tough, right? And then I realized, 
No, 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 no. That was actually his past. He, he's actually rich now. He's actually made it. He's actually chosen a different lifestyle. So that's what we have to do. We have to go from our hard past into the new future that we are creating, right? We get to choose this. So, I had an easy upbringing, but my relationships have scarred me, yes. My daughter and I listen to him, <laughs> yes. That's awesome. Okay, so this all comes down to only as an adult. Okay, so this all comes down to you making choices about who you're picking. Who are you allowing into your life? Are you allowing someone that mistreats you? Are you allowing someone that ignores you? Are you allowing this stuff? And I know what you're gonna say. But if I don't, then I'll have nobody, right? And that's true for a short time, okay? That's only true for a short time. Now, I had this same kind of dilemma, right? I had these three bit, biz friends, business friends that I made, um, I'm allowing it. I had these three business friends that I made at the, be, at the end of 2017, right? We talked every day, every day. But at the middle of last year, right before I manifested my future husband, we had a falling out. We had a falling out. And they said some not nice things to me, right? Now, I don't think they were, I think they were wrong for what they said, but I don't, I, I think that that conversation was supposed to happen, right? I don't blame them. They needed to say what they said because I needed to grow from it, but they weren't right. They, they absolutely weren't right. And they treated me in a way that I should not have been treated. So I took a break from them and I thought, you know, I'm gonna work this out, figure it out inside of me because it's very triggering. So I went back to them a few months later and I tried again. And then I realized that this is not in alignment with me, with, with who, like what I want. And this, these relationships, it was time to like let them go. And it was at the beginning of this year. So we had been together for two and a half years, the three of us. And I thought two and a half years, I'm just gonna throw away two and a half years. And I thought, who, else, who am I gonna have? Like. I won't have anybody because these are my business friends and we've like, when you level up with, you know, with friends, you or business friends, especially you level up, right? You like really help each other. So I was like, I'm not going to have anybody. And as soon as I let them go, as soon as I said, you know, I think we need to take a break. This isn't working. Um, I did it in a very nice way. God had more people for me. So as long as I was holding on to this relationship that these relationships that weren't in alignment for me, then I couldn't have the new relationships. Okay. And now there was a little bit of a gap where I was like, okay, I'm alone. This is okay. I can deal with this, but there is a little bit of gap because the universe, God, the universe, they want to know that you're serious about this decision. They want to know that you're serious about not taking your ex back that's mistreated you, right? They want to, they want to know that you're serious about taking a stand for what you want. And so, yes, the law of vacuum, right? So there's a little bit of a gap where you have to stand in that gap. You have to wait for the blessings to come in. You have to wait for the love to come in because you have to hold this, this space of love for yourself. 
saying, I am enough. I am deserving. I am worthy. Say it with me. I am enough. I am deserving. I am worthy. What, what you allow is what you receive. Yes. Yes. Say it with me. I am deserving. I am deserving because each one of you deserves your soulmate. Each one of you. I've read your story. I've read your story. I've read the parts that you've you've not told anybody. Gosh, you're too too time oh, long my too long time friends mistreated me so bad last year. So bad I decided to cut relationship with them and thank you. I am in the best place right now. I am deserving. I am deserving. I didn't allow stuff. It happened. Okay. Yep. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it does. So where the hell is I know I'm deserving? Yes. Yes. We're working through that. We're working through that. I am deserving. Okay. So manifesting means you have to take the right actions, right? But you have to believe in yourself. You have to trust in yourself. And then when you trust in yourself, you trust yourself to take the right actions. Now, this is a lot like when you go to bed at night and you're like, tomorrow I swear I'm gonna go to the gym. Tomorrow I swear I'm gonna eat right, right? And then the next day happens and there's like donuts and coffee and you sleep in, you don't go to the gym. So you're creating this relationship where you don't trust yourself, right? So you have to take the right actions to get what you want. Manifesting is not just about laying in your hammock for three days or journaling one line in your journal and laying in your hammock for three days and just waiting for him to show up at your door. Yes, that's what happened with me, but you heard my story. I went through 20 years of shit to get to the point where I finally flipped the switch, believed in marriage on May 31st of last year, 2019, right? And then went through and manifested. So you have to have the right steps that lead up to where you can actually call him in, right? So, so, is, is the, are the people that you're picking behaving like your soulmate would behave, right? So, where's the homework? I'm on the wrong page. Okay. Okay. Are the people that you're choosing behaving like your soulmate would behave? Right? Are you going to choose this person? A lot of you have a person in mind or someone better, right? Because if this person is not behaving like your soulmate, Oh, that's not scrolling. I'm deserving. I'm enough. I'm deserving. I'm worthy. I'm worthy. I'm enough. I'm worthy. Oh shit. That's exactly what I would call it all. People are disappointing. <sighs> yep. I just feel a lot of people don't know how to love unconditionally. Okay. So that's about manifesting and that's what you're focused on, right? So I also have felt that way and I still do feel that way sometimes, but it's honestly what you're focused on. You can focus on the people that do know how to love unconditionally and then things will change for you. Okay. So if your soul, if you're the person that you're picking right now, is not behaving, hi Elizabeth, there are always conditions. If they're, if you, the person that you're picking right now is not behaving like your soul mate would behave, 
what are you going to choose? Because if you choose to stay in that, you are creating mistrust with yourself, right? And a lot of people are taught to love themselves and are taught to love unconditionally. So, I mean, there is, it's both ways. It's both ways. It's literally, what are you gonna focus on, right? Who are you gonna surround yourself with? I am now surrounded by so many women, right? And my master, like I joined a mastermind after I, I left the, the little group that I started, right? I left that mastermind, got into another mastermind, right? I got into another mastermind and I'm surrounded by these loving, supportive women that I never imagined that, that would happen, right? So really focus on the other things. Like one of the things that I do, well, how many of you have a cat? How many of you have a cat in, in the comments? Let me know if you have a cat or a dog or a dog. So I have a cat. I have a cat named Basil and she, she likes to beg for food, right? And I, this, I was going to tell the story on Thursday. I am not available for that. Like she'll cry. She's actually sitting here like quietly, quietly, quietly. Kitten, kitten. Awesome. My first one kitten. Uh, three dogs. Okay. So you know about begging animals, right? You know about begging animals, how they want food and how they'll meow, 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 right? Right. I'm not available for that. This is actually the lesson for Thursday. And when she, when she begs, when she begs, I just tell her I'm not available for that. And I put my hand up and she stops. Not now, but love cats. And so she stops because I am not available for that. So if you are, she drives me crazy. If you are, if your, if your person is not behaving like your soulmate, you've got to ignore it. You've got to, nope, I'm sorry, I'm busy. When you start behaving, then we can talk. My two, two cats, best friend, Gilbert, he is old. How, how, okay, are they both named Gilbert? <laughs> so, so you cannot be a bit available for someone that you love to not be acting like your soulmate. So that means, that might mean that you take a break. That might mean that you stop texting him, calling him. My new favorite words. Yeah, all my clients are like, I'm not available for that. They're like, I'm not available for Corona. I'm not available for that. Like anything that they don't want, they're like, I'm not available for that. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> um, yes, yes, yes. So you have to say you're not available for that. <laughs> yes, yes. I don't know what I'm gonna teach on Thursday because this was the lesson on Thursday. You have to literally be, I'm not available for that. Like think of your cat that's just like, cause you, I have trained Basil now. Right, right, healthy boundaries. I have trained Basil, she sits here quietly. She's, she's quiet most of the time. Most, 99% of the time. But she knows that I will just put my hand up and tell her I'm not available for that. And it actually worked. And if that doesn't work, I have a water gun. <laughs> okay? So I am not available. Yes, ignore them. I'm not available for misbehaving. Right? Same for you. If you want your soulmate to act like your soulmate, you have to expect your soulmate to show up like your soulmate. And if he does not, if he does not, he's not your soulmate. <laughs> I am a mean mom. Um, he's not your soulmate, but I have to have it for Facebook lives. I mean, seriously. <laughs> so if that man 
or woman for the guys that are watching. I don't think we have any guys on right now. If that person is not acting like your soulmate, you have to be unavailable for that behavior. And that means move on. And it might mean that your guy is going through something and he needs six months time. You walk away. If he's your soulmate, he will absolutely positively come back. Do not worry. Do not worry. Okay? Because if he's your soulmate and you are soul aligned, which means you are getting the respect that you deserve, your soul wants love and respect. That's what that you and you need to be the first to give that to yourself. Right? You need to be absolute first to give that respect to yourself. If you're not doing that, he will ne never do that. So you need to do that first. If he's not acting like your soulmate, then you give him time. And sometimes, you know, sometimes they're going through stuff. Sometimes, what about narcissists? They always come back. They put on a good show for a long time. You, you got to call it. You got to call it. You got to call it. Basil, come. Come here. Oh, he, she wants me to go over to the food. Come here. Okay, now I'm chasing down my cat. This is Basil. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. Yes, you got to call it. You know, you know, you know the signs, you know the signs. So you have to behave. You have to manifesting means you have to make the right, take the right actions. And that means saying she looks beat and controlling. And that means saying no. That means saying you're unavailable. Priscilla says hi. That means saying you are unavailable for that shit. Okay? Now, I want to tell you a powerful story. Who wants to hear a story? Who wants to hear a story? So, at the end of 2017, does anyone want to hear this story? She looks like Gilbert. That's an issue. You look like a boy. Okay, who wants to hear the story? It's so, so powerful. Okay. Lindsay. Yenny. Okay. End of 2017. My ex and I break up. Right? This guy was a great man. Neglected me for work, like most guys that I dated dead, right? So, but he taught me how to love myself. He was so good to me in so many ways, right? And I really had this dilemma. <laughs> I really had this dilemma. Do I, do I leave this great man, right? For the chance for love, right? Because I didn't really know that soulmates were out there, that I could actually get this relationship that I have right now, right? This is like soul connection, powerful, passionate relationship. I thought you just settled, right? So I was like, end of 2017, we break up. And I'm like, okay. Okay, I'm gonna fix this problem, right? Like I told you guys yesterday. So I'm going to fix this problem. So what do we do? We met at the gym. Um, what do we do? We ended up, I ended up going to counseling with my ex-boyfriend for seven months. Seven months. Seven months. 
right? And we had already discussed moving to Germany because I love Germany. My dad, I grew up in Germany for about three years, right? So I really wanted to move to Germany. This man was going to take me to Germany. How do you know if you're being petty, petty about something or actually respecting yourself by moving on? That is about intuition and really knowing yourself, right? So really manifesting your soulmate relationship is about aligning to your soul, right? Yeah, I got you. So as long as you are soul aligned and connected to your intuition, connected to your soul, Priscilla, nice. Then you will really, like that's that's where you'll manifest your soulmate. So you have to be living a soul-led life, right? So when you're connected to your soul, you, you kind of know these things, right? And this is what I teach my private clients, right? Um, so we were about to move to Germany when we broke up. We had literally got back from a one month trip in Europe, right, in Germany. And we, we come back and we break up. We go to counseling for seven months and he had decided that he was in love with Germany. So he starts applying to jobs, right? Now, you guys know, you guys know how I left my ex-husband, right? You guys know, hi Holly. You guys know that I left my ex-husband on a one-way ticket to Spain, right? You guys know that. I was like, divorce and one-way tickets, I left, right? That's my thing. That's how I left my ex, other ex-boyfriend, right? The one after my ex-husband, right? I, I left him on a one-way ticket. Where did I go? Where did I go? I went a couple places, <laughs> right? So I left him out of the, I went out of the country. I was like, ah, I don't need to stay, right? Hi, Holly, right? So my how I break up with my exes is I leave the country. Why not? So we go to counseling for seven months. He's in love with Germany. He starts applying to places in Germany to get a job and he gets a job. So we get back. I, we figure out the, our problem in our, in our relationship, right? So I really did the work that you guys, the things that you posted yesterday, we went through that kind of stuff. Like what was really going on between him and I? What were the dynamics? Why was I pushing him away? Blah, 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 right? So then we get back all the love, the trust, the respect, and we get our relationship back. But I still know he's not my soulmate, but I'm still like, well, is that a thing? I don't know, right? So he leaves on a one-way ticket to Germany. And I'm like, karma, thank you, <laughs> right? So here's this thing, here's the thing. When you are aligned with your soul, I didn't, he, he just left. When you are aligned with your soul, the wrong people will leave your life, right? Your non-soulmate people, will leave your life. So your goal is to be soul aligned. Connect with yourself. Know what your heart and your soul wants. And to be soul aligned means you have to be unavailable for anything that is not your soulmate. Okay? That means if your soulmate is showing up in a non-soulmate -soul way, you've got to say no. You have to be, what is it? I'm unavailable for that, right? Who's unavailable for that, right? Huh? Okay, okay. So, he leaves to Germany. Thank you, karma. Everybody say thank you, karma. <laughs> Because that answered that question because I didn't have to make any decisions except to just let him go, right? Um, and then a few months later, awesome.
Good, good, Margarita. Margarita's unavailable for that. A uh, few months later, I ended up falling in love with my now future husband, right? So, yes, thank you, Karma. Everybody, like, usually when you hear about karma, like, it's bad thing. But this is actually, this was actually kind of a bad thing, but also really worked out for me. <laughs> I was like, wow, okay, cool. <laughs> the karma truck has come to take my ex away. Um, who needs a, who needs a karma truck? <laughs> I'll send them for your exes. Okay, so, homework, homework. Are the people that you're choosing behaving like your soul mate? Right? Oh no, it's the best thing. Are they behaving like your soulmate would? Are you going to choose this person or someone better? Okay. Things get aligned. Here we go. How would... Start putting... <laughs> Please take my ex karma truck. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, how would the start posting this? Okay, how would uh, they behave if they were really your soulmate? Start putting it in the comments. How would they behave? How would they behave if they were your soulmate? You know? How would they behave? Because this is your homework. Okay. Loyal, thank you, yes. And always put positive words. I don't have anyone in mind right now, but I would definitely want someone better. Trustworthy, good. Consistent, more respect, more attention, not leave. They would always be present. Loving, kind, communicative, honest, attentive. Make plans. Make me a priority. Ask what I need from them and try to deliver. Be committed and loyal like a best friend. Give me attention, love, respect. Okay, awesome, awesome. Keep it coming. Okay. My best friend. Okay. You guys, you guys are doing so well. You guys Understanding, compassionate, loyal, respectful, trustworthy, being my, oh, it's too long, it's, it's cut off over there, uh, attentive, loyal, supportive, totally into decisive. It's cut off, it's cut off on the side. Uh, okay, okay, let's go back, let's go back. Who believes? Who believes? Who believes? I want to see some, I believe, I believe, I believe that I deserve. Yes, build a future that I deserve. Sabrina, my soul mate, will be committed to striving for full present moment. How would they behave? Loving, respecting, caring, respectful, compassionate. My best friend, I believe. Consistent, reliable, loving, vulnerable. I believe, I believe. I believe I'm worthy of everything I want and need. I believe. Here's the thing. I believe. Of course I believe. I deserve that. Punani, what's going on? Community of honest, trustworthy, attentive. I believe. What's up? Do you believe? Do you believe? I totally believe. It is so easy. It is so easy to be in such a like loving, supportive group like this and to be in in this this energy, in this this powerful energy. I know you guys can feel it and to fully believe. But here's what you guys need. You guys need to wake up tomorrow when you haven't gotten all the sleep that you need, when you're hungry, when you're a little bit tired, and still believe. When he doesn't text you back, 
I need you guys to believe. Will you guys still believe when they don't text you back? What are you going to do? I believe I deserve the best life has to offer in a supportive, honoring, honor, it's cut off. <laughs> what if you knew your worth and not getting it, but they don't? You've got to be unavailable for that. If he does not ask, if he does not act like your soulmate, that's right, Elizabeth, bye-bye, right? He will come back if he is your soulmate and he will show up like your soulmate. Be willing and wanting to please, flexible, compassionate, filled. Yes, I believe, I believe. You've got to believe when it's hard to believe. I had to believe when my soulmate was saying, I'm not ready for a relationship. You've got to believe longer than that, Holly. You've got to keep believing. You've got to keep believing. It's, you've got to, you've, you've got to believe and then act. Believe and act. Your actions are going to follow your beliefs. Yes, and your beliefs are going to follow your actions. I believe, but I feel bad because I desperately believe I could manifest the best ever version of him. He is ghosting me now, but I still want the best part of what we had. You got to cut it off. Cut it off. You cannot, ma here, here, Karima, here's you, what you do. Here's what we do. I'm unavailable for that behavior and then Karima everyone you guys are listening I'm unavailable for that behavior and then you go into visualization you use the hand to heart meditation on the healing video and you call in your soulmate you call in your soulmate right you do not be available for anything you don't want. You totally ignore it. Not ignore it like sweep it under the carpet like I did my ex-husband cheating on me. But ignore it like, nope, I'm busy. I, I got I to go into Nicole's group. I got to get some energy. I got to get some belief back. I'm, I'm too busy for you to treat me like this. I'm unavailable. And then you've got to get your belief back. You've got to come back into this group. You've got to get support. Because it is so hard to believe when they say, I'm not ready for a relationship. But you have to be like, okay, I'm unavailable for that. And I'm going to go back to my belief. I'm going to go back to my hand to heart meditation. I'm going to go back to what I want. And I'm going to focus on my soulmate. You hear that? Is everybody focused on their soulmate? So if he's not acting like your soulmate, you call in, you call in your soulmate. You ignore this guy. And if he's your soulmate, he's going to show up. Keep going with our lives. If, if he's your soulmate, he will show up as your soulmate. Okay? My soulmate was not acting like my soulmate. He was saying... He was, he was saying, I love you, but I'm not ready for a relationship, right? Now, I knew, here's the thing, got, ladies, I knew, how do I call him my soulmate? See, I knew with my future husband, I knew exactly what he was going through. I knew he was in a really bad situation with his job and he was very unhappy and he was trying to fix some things in his life. Right? So I knew that what he was going through was temporary because he told me, he's like, this whole situation with my family is going on. My brother's dying. His brother's very sick. Right? So he was dealing with that. And he's like, I can't, I can't even think about a relationship right now. So he was honest, direct, but I was like, but a relationship's great. <laughs> we all know a relationship's great. So he kept telling me, this is going on. I'm not ready for a relationship. And so I waited, right? 
that's completely different than a lot of situations that you are going through. Uh, so it's like if we are training them in the distance how to treat us. Y you are treating, you are training them, but you are training yourself for what you deserve. Okay, it's two way. You are training yourself that you deserve better. This is more for you than it is for them. Because we can't actually, that's on the website, Karima. It's, on, it's, on, it's in the group, okay? We can't actually change the other person. We can, here's what happened with uh, my future husband. Right? We had a conversation about this. He's like, what's this manifesting? <laughs> we, what you can do, you guys remember this. Uh, if you don't have someone in mind with the hand to heart person, would you, uh, like the type of person instead of, act? yes. Lindsay, yes. Uh, you just have to have a vision of what you want. It doesn't have to be an actual person. It's probably actually better if you don't have an actual person. Uh, they will step up or they will be out of the way so real soulmate can step. Yeah, the, um, the karma train will pick up your exes. As, when you start doing this, the karma train is going to pick up your exes. Who needs the karma train? Who needs the karma train? They're just going to pick up your exes, okay? But you have to be unavailable for the bullshit, okay? Okay? Okay. So this is, this is, here, here's how manifestation works. We talked a little bit about it yesterday, right? Manifestation, here's where you are right now. Here's where you want to be, right? I knew that there was a version of me with my future husband married, living in a, in a house on the beach, right? I was like, I already know this is real. Like, I, I see it. I already know right right so here's how you collapse time and space you don't actually change anything right this is already going to happen your future is already going to happen right you're already going to be with your husband or wife for the guys that are catching the replay Right? You're already going to be married. You're already going to be in this relationship. What you do is you, it's like basically fast forwarding video, right? You just collapse time and space. You get there faster, right? Now you can either get there faster by taking this, um, going through this challenge, working with me privately, working with me in a group, or, you know, going to therapy or, you know, you, there's many ways to collapse time and space. But what you're doing right now is expanding what you've been doing for the last, I'm going to say 20 years, because that was my number. You've been expanding this time and space, right? And what you're doing this week is you're bringing it together, right? You're collapsing time and space, right? So what your actions, you showing up, you doing your homework, you working with me, whatever you need to do, whatever your soul tells you to do, if you keep doing what your soul tells you to do, you're gonna collapse time and space, okay? It's like fast forwarding the video, okay? That's what we're doing, right? This is already going to happen. You are destined to be with your soulmate. That's what your soul does. Your soul calls in all the things that it wants. Your soul drives you to your purpose. Your soul brings you to creating money in your business. Your soul drives you to getting soulmate clients. Your soul drives you towards your soulmate. If you follow your soul, you're going to get your soulmate. You have to follow your soul, right? That's how we co collapse time and space. Who believes? Who believes you already 
are in this amazing relationship. Who believes this is already destined for you? This is 100% guaranteed. You have to just say yes to it. You have to say yes every everything your soul tells you to do, which your soul told you to be here this week. Your soul told you to do homework. Your soul told you to be on this Facebook Live, right? Every time you say yes to your soul, you're collapsing time and space. You're getting closer to this. Now, if you start saying no to your soul, like tomorrow you don't show up for the Facebook Live, right? You say no to your soul when your soul says to show up for the Facebook Live, you're expanding this time and space. That's why it's taking you 20 years because you keep saying no to your soul. I will follow my soul. I believe I collapse time and space. Yes, yes. You have to keep saying yes to your soul. That works with money, that works with your purpose, that works with your destiny. You can say no to all these things. I believe I'm in this relationship, but I have to let him work on himself until our times collide. Yes, yes. Can my friend Hanover keeps trying to sign on? It's say, it's, uh, Chris will talk to me after. I, I'm not sure what that means. Okay, okay. Who believes? Who believes? Believing is the most important thing because if you do not believe, I believe I'm in an amazing soul, soul relationship. If you do not believe, then you're gonna say yes to the bullshit. You're gonna say yes, I'm available for the bullshit. You're, I'm, yes, I'm available for a narcissist relationship. Yes, you're gonna say yes to all these things. Yeah, Elizabeth, we don't have another 20 years. Let's collapse time and space, right? That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. And when I decided, May 31st of last year, right? When I decided May 31st of last year that I was going to manifest my future husband, I was like, I don't care how long it takes. I did not know it was gonna show up in four days. I'm thrilled it showed up in four days, but it was like, I had known him for four years. I had been in love with him for a year. So it wasn't, kind of wasn't four days, right? I did a lot of hard work. And it was the thing that made it that last year, right? The thing that made it so hard, right? Was I would believe one day and then the next day I would be like, uh, I can't believe. I, I, I'm like, this is so hard to believe it. And then the next day I would believe. And then the next day I wouldn't believe. And that's why it took a year. You guys, you've got to believe. You've got to believe. And I know it's hard to believe. I know it is. I literally thought, when I thought, when I realized I was manifesting, because I was like never did it in this sort of way, right? When I realized I was manifesting, I was like, this is crazy. Is this like, when I was a kid, when I was a kid, okay, I gotta ask you, I gotta ask you guys, who, when you were a kid, who wanted to be a mermaid? <laughs> because I bet I'm not the only one. So put a one in the comments if you wanted to be a mermaid when you were a kid, okay? Because I gotta know, right? So when I was a kid, I really wanted to be a mermaid, right? I really wanted to be a mermaid. I would be in the bathtub. with the wishy-washy. You wanted to be a mermaid. Okay, good. Crystal, good. I'm not the only one. Crystal, awesome. So I would, uh, Margarita, I would be in the bathtub and I would close my eyes and I would be like, I'm a mermaid. And then I'd open my eyes. <laughs> I used to swim circles in the pool. <laughs> And then I'd wake up and I wasn't a mermaid. So last year, last year, I thought, is this the same as when I wanted to be a mermaid? Is this as crazy as when I was a kid and I wanted to be a mermaid? I still want to be one now, <laughs> right? 
And I thought, this is as crazy as, like, me believing that he's going to show up and we're going to be married? I'm like, this is crazy. But you know what? <laughs> I love mermaids. Okay. Good. I'm not the only one. But <clears throat> you know what? I didn't care because I spent 20 years not believing. And that hurt so much. But when I finally really believed, right? When I finally truly believed, it felt so good. It felt like I could trust the universe again. It felt like I could trust men again. It felt like I could trust myself again. I finally got into this place where I believed and I just decided, I don't care how long it takes this time. I'm gonna fully believe and I'm gonna keep doing what I have to do to manifest my soulmate. And I'm just gonna sit here and I'm gonna visualize. I have the mermaid hair now, love to swim in. Every time I go to the ocean or lagoon, I am one. Yeah, because it's hurt so much not to believe. So you have to really, really be consistent and believe. And if you need help with that, I know you will. I know you will. Because like, what are you gonna do tomorrow when he doesn't text back? Like this has been an issue. But we're going to get to all that. We're going to keep going. We have three more days. We have three more days. Okay. So I want you to commit. Never again. Because you need to trust yourself. Commitment. Never again. Never again. Never again. Okay. Never again. Who's with me? Okay. That's it. Okay. So I'm going to upload your homework. It's in the unit section on the left hand side in the Facebook group. Margarita, never again. On the left hand side in the Facebook group. Okay. I'm going to upload it and provide a link. Me, it's time. I'm too tired not to listen. Never again. Yes. Never again. Yes. Yes. You guys, I love you guys. I love each and every single one of you. You guys have opened up and shared your story and I'm just like, I love you guys. And I know, I know what's possible for you. I know that this is possible for you. Yanni, yes. Crystal, yes. Michelle, yes. So, so, that is it for today. Same bat time tomorrow, same bat channel, Elizabeth. Crystal, thank you. Margarita. Okay, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Love you guys.